Hello out there to you. In this problem, we're going to find the market equilibrium, and then we're going to draw a little diagram with uh, consumer and producer surplus. We're going to calculate consumer and producer surplus, and then add those together and get our total surplus. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so uh, what we want to do if we want to find equilibrium values algebraically, uh, this is how I'm going to do this. Uh, we have the inverse demand function. And then we have a su inverse supply function here. We just need to set those equal to each other. Okay, so the price where uh, demand and supply equal, that is our equilibrium value. So we can just set this up like this, 100 minus 1 half Q equals negative 20 plus Q. Okay, so we're going to add uh, 1 half Q to both sides. So now we got 1.5 Q over here, and we're going to add 20 to both sides. We got 120 over here, and then uh, divide both sides by 1.5. So that's 120 divided by 1.5, and that gives us 80, and 80 is the quantity in the market. Now, if I want to find what the price is, I can just plug in 80 into either uh, function it'll give us the answer and it'll give us in fact the same answer so here it's negative 20 plus 80 would be 60 okay and then over here uh 80 one half of 80 is 40 so 100 minus 40 is also 60 so the price is 40. okay so we're going to sketch a little diagram uh you could just put this in a graphing calculator and if you do that what you want to do is, is uh, substitute instead of P, you want to use a Y and then substitute here, uh, use an X. Okay, so we're not going to do that. We're going to uh, draw this old school. Okay, so make that a little smaller. There we go. Okay, so in economics, we always have uh, price on the Y axis, quantity on the X axis. Uh, so here's price, here's quantity. We we know uh, that there's a point uh, where they're going to meet at 60 and 80. What we don't know is like where is the beginning of the demand curve. So what we can do is plug in. This is a zero right here. So I want to know what value price would be at on the, along the demand curve if quantity is zero. So if I put a zero right there, it's one half times zero, and that would be 100. Okay. And then if I want to know where does that hit the x-axis, what I could do is put a zero, do that down here. I could put a zero in for price, because that would be the zero down here. And then this is going to equal 100 minus 1 half Q. Uh, add both sides, uh, 1 half Q, 100. OK, and multiply both sides by uh, two, because that's going to get rid of that one half, and so we'd have 200. So over here, 200. So there's a line that goes from 100 to 200, and that's our demand curve. So let's uh, let's kind of draw that like that. Okay, so that's that's uh, that bit of that diagram. Okay, and then for our supply function, we're going to do the same thing. So if we put a zero in here for quantity, well, let's do that kind of over here. Uh, so we've got price equals negative 20 and minus zero. That's going to be price is negative 20. So what that means is we're down here and the start of our supply function is going to be at negative 20. So it'll be like right there. Okay. And then uh, let's let's put in 200. Let's see where the point would be at quantity 200, um, what would be the price that would go with that? Okay, so um, we're just going to plug that in. So price equals negative 20 plus 200. So at 200 units, the price would need to be 180. So that would be like a number like way up here. So there's a point like way up here. So we're going to go go here all the way up there okay and uh, actually that connects that's not drawn correctly we want to connect it all the way up here okay 
So what we the last thing we don't know is we don't know this point right here. This point right here. So we just need to find that point. And that point exists when price is zero. So we're going to put in price as zero, negative 20 plus Q, add 20 to both sides. I got 20. Uh, Q is 20. So this right here is 20. Okay. So now if I want the equilibrium price and quantity, that's going to be right here in my little diagram. And this price was 60. And this quantity is 80. Okay, my, my graph is not drawn to scale. We're going to put a S and a D right there. And so this is the consumer surplus. And then the, the producer surplus is only going to go from here. So it's, it's not the entire market. Okay, so that's our diagram. This is like nothing because if the under 20 units, the sellers won't sell any units. So uh, consumer surplus is just going to be one half. It's the area of that triangle. So it's the difference between 160, so that's 40, and then uh, the difference between 0 and 80, so times 80, and so that would be 3,200. Half of that would be 1,600. I should put like an arrow, make sure that's not. And so th this is in money, so whatever money units you're using, uh, that's the size of the consumer surplus. So 3,200 and half is 1,600. That's the consumer surplus. The producer surplus is to start out at 20. So on the unit side, we're only going from 20 to uh, 60. I'm sorry, 20 to 80, which is only 60 units. So that's a that's a big difference here. We're not going. We're not starting out at zero. We're starting out at 20. 20 to 80 is a difference of 60. And then from zero to 60 would be 60 times 60. So that's uh, 360, I'm sorry, 3,600. And then half of that would be 1,800. Okay. Um, so so we're, we're all set there. Uh, and so we just add both of those together. 1,600 plus 1,800 is oh i want to make sure i get the right answer right i've been out in the sun a little bit too much today 3400 so total surplus is going to be producer surplus plus consumer surplus and that's going to be uh, just what the calculator says 34 3400 you don't want to make a mistake when, when the clock's watching you there you go that's how to calculate uh total surplus producer surplus and consumer surplus